offensively for ULM as they get started with Thomas Howell. Well, that last possession, they run something called delay. It's a five-out offense, similar to what you would see in the pros with teams like the Nuggets. And they ran that to perfection, getting a great look for Thomas Howell on that last possession. ULM starters look like this, and the Warhawks going with their fourth different starting lineup this season. Andre Drones, Kareem Ozier, along with Thomas Howell, Russell Harrison. And the newcomer to the starting lineup, at least for this game, is Langston Powell as the shot goes over the top. And SMU looking to score first. It's going to be really important for the Warhawks in this game to get back in defensive transition. That's how the Mustangs have been successful thus far this season, is getting out on misses to create easy buckets. Outstanding point guard Kendrick Davis comes up short on the jumper, and Russell Harrison, the transfer from Clarendon College in his second year with the Warhawks, comes out with the board. A corner three, short by Powell, and the rebound out, last touch by the Warhawks. As you see Thomas Howell getting a finger on that Offensive rebound not able to get it down, but that's an area that the Mustangs really need to improve uh, if, if there's one glaring weakness that the Mustangs have thus far this season It's got to be uh, their lack of ability uh, to get defensive rebounds Davis turning the corner and Davis bumps as he enters the lane but finds Vandemel one of his great three-point shooters who hits the outside shot and gets fouled That's one thing you got to know when you're defending Emmanuel Vandemel is he's going to take a three in, in this season, particularly in these last three games. He's been shooting 46 percent from deep. Uh, but the other thing about Vandemel is that 80 percent of his shots are three pointers. So you got to run him off the line, make him put it on the bounce, which he's good at. Uh, but this year he is doing the three exceptionally well. Yeah, he's feeling very comfortable from outside. Another three by the Warhawks and a response by Langston Howell, the 6'5 junior out of West Monroe, Louisiana, right there in his hometown is where he's playing ball. And Kendrick Davis, a little push off, and the fadeaway goes. Talking about Langston Powell, he was instituted into the starting lineup because of his size. Coach Richard really afraid of the length, the size, the athleticism of the Mustangs as you see him knocking down that three-pointer last possession. Andre Jones goes baseline. That's a little whip out to Ozier who hasn't scored yet, but bashes his way to the bucket and earns a couple foul shots. Bandamel on the foul. Kareem Ozier has been the leading scorer for the Warhawks the last two games as you see him put it on the bounce. And what you tell players offensively to do is attack the closeout. A poor closeout by Emmanuel Vandermilt. Good job by Ozier of taking advantage of that. Ozier has done a nice job getting to the line this season. 71%. That's about average for NCAA Division I player. Ozier, 11 points a game, three and a half rebounds. As you said, the leading scorer in the last two transferred in from Sacred Heart after starting the last two seasons and averaging 14 points a game. Isaiah J.C., the starting center, tracks down the rebound. He's out of Colleen in Central Texas. Mustangs running their dribble weave offense. They utilize to take advantage of their quickness off the bounce. What I like is when they attack the rim, that just allow the defense to go side to side. Now, Weathers on the miss from three, but Bandemel does come out with the rebound. And SMU resets. Still 11 to shoot for Davis. Interesting to see how the Warhawks play the pick and roll and the dribble drive. They spent an inordinate amount of time yesterday in practice trying to make sure that they keep the defenders in front of the offensive players of the Mustangs. Bandemel misses from deep. ULM keeps SMU to one shot that trip. One for three from deep for SMU. Warhawks looking for the lead as Jones has it go off the underside of the glass and it's recovered by Powell. Open three for the lead by Kareem Ozier. Good closeout by Isaiah J.C. on the mismatch, but a better offense by Powell hitting him for his second triple of the day. Thomas Howell, actress from Louisiana, coming out with the offensive rebound. Marcus Weathers goes cross court. 
Nuttall steps into a three, and the whim is unkind for the transfer from Sam Houston. I would think that the Mustangs would try to get Zach Nuttall going early. Started last game against Sam Houston with an early three and didn't make another three after that, but he's going to be integral with the success of the Mustangs this season. Thomas Howell, the undersized five with the up and under move. Nice move by the freshman. Came in shooting 80% over his last two games, and he shows you why there. Only five-point lead for ULM. Jesse Mew tries to get it going. Mustangs had a mismatch down on the interior with Isaiah J.C. going against Kareem Ozier. Not able to take advantage of it. Davis late in the shot clock, able to find the shot. Wanted the call too when Ozier didn't get it. Kendrick Davis started this game with an assist before the tip-off even started. Yesterday I came to watch the Warhawks play. I couldn't get in. Kendrick Davis was still here, just got finished working out and let me in, so I appreciate that with the assist to me by Kendrick Davis. <laughs> and with that being the case, I mean, SMU being a little bit thinner up front this season defensively, do you think this is a good matchup for ULM? It, it is, and, and, and that's why I think you're going to see Jamar Young Jr. in this game early for that rim protection and the fact that the Warhawks like to attack the rim and get most of their points on the interior. SMU with Michael Weathers on the floor for the first time. Tries to find Bandamel. Only one to shoot. Bandamel, the little hook to save the possession. Good outcome on that broken play by Emmanuel Bandamel. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than to be good. And Weathers and Bandamel were able to connect on that messed up play. Four straight points. Harrison fires back with a three. And Davis clears the carom for SMU and starts that run ahead. And too strong for Marcus Weathers. You know, looking at that last possession by Russell Harrison, he's a guy that needs to pick it up for the Warhawks. Talking to Keith Richard yesterday, uh, Harrison was a Juco All-American and was the Junior College Player of the Year. Hasn't really shown that ability yet in D1, but he does have that potential, and they're looking for him to really accelerate his game. Jones on the miss. Marcus Weathers gets it ahead to Michael. Back to Marcus. He pitches it down to Tristan Clark. Clark lost it going up, and Harrison picks it away. Really been impressed with the defensive transition of the Warhawks thus far this game. Getting back is five and matching up and preventing easy looks from the Mustangs. And Andre Jones takes advantage of the third SMU turnover with his first bucket. ULM up by three early on. Warhawks coming in two and three, coming off a 30-point loss at Louisiana Tech. Good job by Howell playing protection defense on that pick and roll, preventing Kendrick Davis to get to the rim. After a three-point barrage last time out against Sam Houston, it's not going down for SMU so far, just one of five from distance. Again, that five-out offense by the Warhawks. Allows them to get those open shots with a, a good look by Russell Harrison from, from deep. One thing coaches will always stress, you never, ever want to foul a shooter, in particularly a three-point shooter. Here you go, nice dribble handoff, fake reverse. Harrison comes off a pin down from the wing. Michael Weathers gets his hands, or Marcus Weathers, rather, gets his hands up, but a little contact going up. You can see the numbers there for Russell Harrison. As you mentioned, somebody that needs to pick it up. Only around six points, three and a half rebounds a game. He did average 12 and six last year, but only shot 33% for Keith Richard and ULM a season ago, as we get see some early minutes from Stefan Todorovic for SMU. And that's what Coach Richard stressed, mentioning that last year they asked him to do more and his shooting percentage suffered and this year they're not asking him to do as much uh, it's more guard oriented and just hoping that lack of pressure will allow russell harrison to flourish harrison now six of seven this season from the free throw line after going two of three that possession the Dorovich, great three-point shooter hands off to bandamel taking it off the bounce no good off the glass but tristan clark is there to clean it up and that's one of the things I would like Emmanuel Vandermeer to do more is attack the rim. He's so athletic and has uh, such a knack and instinct around the rim. But again, great offensive rebound by Tristan, T Tristan Clark, and that's what he's in the game to do, score around the rim and get those offensive boards. Andre Jones Whoa. from Phillips banks home a three. Andre Jones with his first triple of the season. Well, Jones has been con pretty consistent 
this season with three consecutive games in double figures. He's a downhill player. You need to keep in front of him as far as the rim is concerned. Known an ability from distance early on in this game. Yuel Lamb shooting above 50%. Todorovic, this is exactly what he wants. Ten toes to the rim shooter, and he makes it a three-point game. Now, if there's one thing you do not want to do for a guy coming off the bench, particularly one that can shoot like Stefan Todorovic, is leave him open. Last two games, he's shooting 80%, four for five from distance. And that five, five for six from distance. Nice. Emmanuel Bandemel assisted on it, his first assist in from they were shooting 25%, which is the 10th worst shooting percentage in the country. So you've got to protect that three-point line. SMU gave St. Houston a lot of open looks from three as well. That's something they did not take advantage of. And another missed three by Trey Boston. And Kendrick Davis into the lane. His second turnover, he points at that pivot foot and tries to plead his case to no avail. Well, and that was an instance where Kendrick Davis tried to do too much. The lane was packed with Warhawk defenders. Pull it out, try to uh, make something happen or allow your teammate to make something happen. And that's something that occasionally you're seeing more of this season than you have previously is, is Kendrick Davis trying to push it and do it a little too much on the interior. And Harrison hits a deep two. Harrison stretching out the range, making it a five-point ULM lead. And that's what Harrison has the ability to do. He's a stretch four. He can put it on the bounce. He has a beautiful jumper, but it just has not been going down of late. He's a Lubbock native, so playing in his home state, albeit several hours away from home. As a foul is coming on ULM, Trey Boston picks this one up, and it's only the second team foul on Monroe. Yeah, and that's something that's not prototypical for this Warhawk basketball team. You look at the free throw rate as which they foul, and they do that about 40% of all defensive possession, putting them in the bottom fifth percentile of the country. So doing a good job this game of playing defense with their feet and not their hands. And Rick Davis sits down for SMU, and the Mustangs, uncharacteristically, minus five with him on the floor to start the game. See if the backups can get it done. Guys like Zurich Phelps, number one, hands off to Nuttall. He tries to force a pass inside to Young, and it's poked away by Luke Phillips. Good job by the Warhawks with some pack line defense really contracting the interior when the Mustangs are penetrating. Elijah Gonzalez has been the starting point for ULM, number three. Ball in his hands right now again, and he did come off the bench to start this game. Ray Boston has it poked away by Michael Weathers, and Todorovic picks it out of the air. SMU trying to get some easy points down by five. Phelps, the freshman out of Duncanville, turning the corner. Phelps again, going baseline, and foul, arm barred on the baseline. It's going to be important for the Mustangs to get some offensive continuity when Kendrick Davis goes on the bench. And, and that's the main impetus for Zerk Phelps. Keep the offense running smoothly, get guys involved, um, but most importantly, make positive play. It's a positive play there. Forces the second foul on Trey Boston, who has to sit down. The sophomore guard out of Chicago. Catch and shoot by Nuttall. Off the rim, but there is Young to clean it up. Can't finish. Young looked like he was almost surprised to get that basketball in his hand. One that he's been making uh, throughout the season when he's gotten the opportunity. Shooting a high percentage this season. Not able to knock it down. He's had two very good games in a row. Uncharacteristic low miss there as Hal goes to work. The freshman out of St. Mary's High in Louisiana. Six points already. I, I love the way the up. Can't hit on the two. Young keeps it alive. But Hal comes out with it again. Seven-point advantage for the Warhawks. Gonzalez finds how. And the Warhawks continue this hot start, but a travel on ULM. Warhawks doing an exceptional job up until that point with only two turnovers, taking care of the ball and, and nice ball security. You never want to give up and have those empty possessions like that when you're on the road. Young comes out, J.C. back in. Yeah. Coach Richard has to be pleased with his Warhawk effort to this point. Like you said, only the two giveaways, shooting 53% from the floor. 
defending right with the Mustangs when it comes to rebounding as well. And of course, the score up by seven. Michael Weathers out to JC. Hits Phelps in the lane and going up, fouled. Goes to the line for two. Warhawks overplaying a little bit on the exterior, and, and Zurich Phelps, with some nice recognition, takes his defender back door. Good weak side help by Russell Harrison to prevent the easy bucket. Good recognition by Zurich Phelps. Langston Powell picks up his second. And sitting time for Powell. Meanwhile, Henrik Davis comes back in. He'll play side by side with Phelps as Nuttall takes a seat. Zurich Phelps, freshman year out of Duncanville High, averaging three points a game. Goes one of two that trip. Elijah Gonzalez, the player with the basketball, has really been good for the Warhawks this season. North and South player with, with a good job of getting the Warhawks into their sets and getting them in the positions to be successful. Davis has been on the bench trying to initiate the offense. Weathers just misses a bunny. Two possessions where the Mustangs have had easy looks at the rim that they've missed. A contact out front. And you really got credit for patience as you see a nice look down low by Thomas Howe. Patience of the Warhawks. They're getting into their sets and they're taking advantage of mismatches like they did on that last possession. Davis the head fake down by eight. Nice. Finds a cutting. Marcus Weathers adjusts at the hole and goes to the line for two. In this last possession by the Mustangs, Kendrick Davis did a good job of surveying the lane and surveying the landscape. And you see him drawing those three defenders. Really, he drew four defenders, able to get it to Michael Weathers as he cut to the rim, or Marcus Weathers, rather, as he cut to the rim. Marcus Weathers, Michael Weathers, they are twins, playing on the same team for the first time since their freshman season, way back at Miami of Ohio, where they started their careers. Get a look at Tristan Clark in the interior coming in for Isaiah Jacy. And Marcus Weathers makes good on the free throws. First couple points for Marcus Weathers and SMU back within six. You see Coach Jankovic talking to Isaiah JC when he brought him out. And I love Isaiah JC the way he hustles, his enthusiasm for the game, but they have to get more out of the interior, um, particularly for him. Uh, Hasn't really been scoring a lot. And when he's getting those opportunities, he, he has to make them happen. Hasn't scored in the last three games coming into this one. Ozier stays on the dribble, forces his way to the bucket, and a tough finish around a good defender in Michael Weathers. You have to win your individual battles, and that's what I'm not seeing from the Mustangs thus far this game. And the Warhawks just want it more in this first half. Just an outstanding start for the Warhawks. A lot to be excited about. Tristan Clark, one on one with Hal, goes up against the freshman, leaves it for Phelps. Phelps has to be ready to shoot the ball. He had an open three. Got to be ready when that ball comes into your hand. Davis steps into one instead, and Michael Weathers tracks down the miss. So Marcus Weathers goes to work with the spin and the hang, but he can't hit against Harris. And that's what you can't have. You can't have individual players getting in the hero ball mode, and, and that's what at times happens for the Mustangs. You have players that can score and have done that in the past, and when they stop moving the ball and stop playing that team basketball, they get into problem. Downhill for Gonzalez, who failed to score against Louisiana Tech last time out, but he has his first two points, the junior college transfer from Clarendon College here in Texas. That is a really nifty move by the freshman, Zurich Phelps, dipping the shoulder and finding his way. What you're seeing, though, from the Mustangs, they're not getting a lot from their offense. They're getting players that are making some athletic and acrobatic plays, but in order for them to be successful when the season comes around, they're going to need to be able to get easy buckets from their offense, and they have not been able to do that thus far in this game. This by Ozier. See if Davis can find some team offense. He goes baseline, gets it blocked, right back to him. Weathers to Weathers. This is Marcus, a little stutter step. No, but Tristan Clark cleans up the miss again. Again, even though the Mustangs are scoring on those last two possessions, if you saw the Warhawk defense Mustangs down the stretch because they had to learn to play with adversity, and adversity is what they're having today on the hilltop against 
Louisiana Monroe. Certainly a little hangover, a little different defense here for SMU. Yeah, Jankovic is changing it up, a little trap at the high post, a 1-3-1. One, one. Just really trying to mess with the chemistry offensively of the Warhawks. And Harrison knocks out the pal miss, so it works at least on that possession. And I wouldn't be shocked to see if the Mustangs went back to man-to-man -man on the last, on the next possession, just wanting to kind of mess up the timing and rhythm of the Warhawks offensively. Meanwhile, SMU on this end, only two for their last ten from the field as they try to get it going. Backdoor slip, rising to the rim. Jalen Smith misses on the dunk. Nice pinch post to Marcus Weathers back door for Jalen Smith, and that's what I mean when I talk about getting something out of your offense. Even though they didn't score, it was a positive possession. Davis steps back, can't knock down the three. And again, Thomas Howell pulls in the rebound. And see John back to the one-on-one -on -one and a contested three-point shot. Was not an easy shot, and you're not going to win against good teams having offensive sets like that. Meanwhile, Langston Powell misses on the long two. Davis trying to find something in transition. First team all conference player throws it behind Marcus Weathers. It's been that kind of first half for the Mustangs. Again, a little over penetration by Kendrick Davis trying to make something out of nothing. I love the aggressiveness, but you have to know when to pull back, try to get something positive for your team. Right now, there's no continuity in the Mustangs offense as, as they stay in that 1 3 1 trap which leaves the interior suspect with Kendrick Davis, Davis protecting the rim. Free throw line jumper way off by Andre Jones, though. Kendrick Davis, uncharacteristically, one assist, three turnovers. Feeds it to Marcus Weathers. A lot of contact there and can't play through it. Russell Harrison strips it away. You see that hero ball becomes infectious upon the team, and everybody tries to take it upon themselves to bring the Mustangs back, but this is when team basketball has to be at the forefront, and that's the way to get back into the game. Here's a turn. Now they led against Auburn, so the Mustangs need to figure some things out at halftime. They have had some big losses this season, there's no doubt, but they did have a big win over Northwestern State, just like SMU did. And a two trip by Bandemel to cut it down to five. ULM, meanwhile, has not scored in three minutes. SMU changing some things up defensively and dumping it in. Thomas Howell, he already has 10. Just really liking the patience of the Warhawks. I mean, you saw in that last possession, Andre Jones just took his time, penetrated the defense, and Howell he stays in his lane, flashes, gets an easy look to the rim, and just you know, playing their game, doing a good job of it. Nice job by Young to track it down. Dish it to Davis. Three-pointer short. Davis has the rebound and will go to the line as Kareem Ozier bodies him to the floor. Ozier with his second foul. Davis going to the line for a one-and-one. And one. And again, that wasn't a bad possession by the Mustangs. Second chance scoring opportunity. Davis was open, but I just feel like the Mustangs need to try something different. Need to have more ball movement. Ball needs to go east to west soften their defense up, try to get something easy to energize not only the team, but the crowd, which is, you know, somewhat lifeless on this Sunday afternoon. Kendrick Davis, one of the best free throw shooters in SMU history, chasing Eric Longino, 85% in his career, 86% for this season. And Davis can get there a lot. Ball dominant point guard for the most part. Helps move this offense. Big assist guy, scoring guy as well. Led the conference in scoring and assists last year. Davis as advertised. Perfect at the line. Louisiana Monroe still up by five, though. Thomas Howell's been a big difference with 10 points. He hands off to Jones. Jones with a finger roll from about seven feet. High double screen for Jones on the three-point line, and he was able to utilize that to maneuver on the interior. And he can elevate over the defense, as you saw on the last two possessions by him. And really impressed with the way Andre Jones is playing thus far in this game. Vanderbilt double finds Davis. He says, don't mind if I do. The difference between that three-point shot and the previous one by Kendrick Davis is 
on the initial one, it was just off of a kick out, but this one, the ball went side to side on, and on the ball was a reversal. Hendrick Davis attacked the four closeout. A nice three point shot. And that's the type of offense the Mustangs need to have in this game. Kraut starting to murmur a bit more. A throw away. A chase down by Young. Finds Davis. Three pointer. Bangs it down. As you see, Keith. Coach Keith Richard upset about that last possession, but again, that was a smart three-point shot by Kendrick Davis because he had three offensive rebounders on the interior, so if he missed, he had a good chance of a second chance scoring opportunity. Thomas Howell receives a nice pass and flushes it in. Howell continues to be effective inside six of seven from the floor. Coach Richard mentioned how improved Thomas Howell is, an undersized big that is Oh, so good around the rim and you got to credit the Warhawks. They're getting the basketball to how where he can be successful Young inside slips it to Marcus Weathers Get it right back to Davis. He's not down two straight threes instead hesitates nice feeds it Ben Demel for the time and, and John that's exactly what I was talking about Kendrick Davis penetrates had three defenders on him. He kicked it out to a wide open Vandermel, and that's the recipe for success that the Mustangs had been following before this game, and they kind of forgot about it a little bit with the recent success from the three point line. But that's how they've been successful from the three point line with ball movement. Gain the lead. They've led by as many as eight here in the first half, or rather, 10 was the largest lead at 28 to 18. Andre Jones with five to shoot it. Jones dishes inside. Nice finish by Luke Phillips. I mean, it doesn't seem like it matters who's on the interior for the Warhawks as long as you can make it. Attacking and being assertive offensively and defensively in that first two minutes of the game. Same starters for SMU in the second half. Marcus Weathers found outside by Nuttall. Keeps his drive alive, and he's blocked by Russell Harrison. Initially loved the ball movement, but a little bit of an over-penetration by Marcus Weathers. you got to find those easy buckets. And Andre Jones leans in toward the hole to transfer out of Nichols with the bucket. Good job by Thomas Howell really loading to the basketball and preventing Kendrick Davis from attacking the rim in transition. Meanwhile, a foul on the interior. It's on the floor, so no foul shots, despite the great position by Isaiah J.C. inside. Fouls on Russell Harrison, his first and team's first in the second half. ULM at 55% from the field. SMU only shooting 35%. Mustangs only down by four, have to feel fortunate. Look for the Mustangs to try to get Zach Nuttall more involved offensively. Only two shots, and Nuttall is too good of an offensive player to not be more involved offensively. Wow, what a job by Weathers to knock it off to Pandamel, but then Weathers throws it away, Howell anticipating a pass. You really got to credit the Warhawks defensively, just taking the Mustangs out of their, all of their rhythm offensively. No continuity offensively for the Mustangs. We're halfway through those first two minutes you talked about, and so far they're being won by ULM, but JC Good. with the block there. Good block by JC, averaging one block per game. That's 10th in the American Conference. Davis the loses it out. The rim is, is paramount for the Mustangs. Now, excuse me, uh, Stephen, and you'd like to see a block like that lead to a bucket the other way, but then a, another turnover. Yeah, having those, and that was really an unforced turnover. Just, again, players trying to do too much and not sharing the basketball. Andre Jones kicks it out, ends up with Howell. Howell on his way to the glass and a blocking foul. It was a clean block by JC, but Davis stepping out couldn't take the charge. I, I think Davis might have been there on time, but the official pointed to the restricted area, so he, he might have had his feet in the restricted area, and yeah, he did have his heel right there on the line. So good thought with a couple of inches. Meanwhile, jc has been a little bit more aggressive in the second half, trying to be a rim protector. Had a chance to see Thomas Howell at the free throw line where he's six of nine coming in. has really shown off from uh, the field over the last three games. He is 18 of 22 now over the last three games from the field. I just love the fact that Howe plays within himself. He knows he's an under-the-rim interior player that really is, is 
is most successful around the rim, and he just makes himself available to cuts and for offensive plays. And credit to the Warhawks, they get him the basketball where he can be successful. A little bit more of the same from the Warhawks in the second half, grinding on this SMU team, not letting them get out and go like they want to. Vanderbilt with a missed time pass to Weathers, who is cutting down the baseline. I mean, in this game, the Mustangs are looking like this is the first time that they've played together. They've had so many plays like that last possession where Vandemel and Marcus Weathers just did not have the timing or were doing something differently. And again, the Warhawks are taking advantage of that. SMU a minus six in turnover, making a minus five as they take it away there. But a breakout is prevented by the hold for Andre Jones. Yeah, smart play by Jones, really preventing a, an easy bucket and something that could be positive as far as momentum for the Mustang. Keith Richard's team playing a grind it out game. Warhawks leading by as many as 10 in the first half. The lead is five now. Davis trying to change that as he creates the contact against Harrison. He earns some foul shots. Mustangs running the high horn set on that last possession. Wanted to take advantage of Kendrick Davis's ability to turn the corner once he goes off that pick and roll. And you see him doing just that, attacking Russell Harrison after he turned the corner and, and being a body seeker. And that's what smart players do. You get a defensive player up in the air, you seek that body, and you, you understand that either you're going to get a bucket or a chance at the free throw. Russell Harrison becomes the fourth player for ULM with two fouls apiece. Nobody has three as Davis knocks down both foul shots. Hendrick Davis leads all scores with 14 points and cuts it down to a three-point game. Defensively is where SMU is going to have to really change the momentum of this game, and that's not the defense I was talking about. Though. Wow, Andre Jones, the sweeping crossover and jamming it past Marcus Weathers. I mean, you talk about consistency, three consecutive games by Jones in double figures, and you, you see that confidence that he had taking that basketball straight down Main Street for easy dunk. Confidence is brimming. Marcus Weathers hits the three, though, to cut the lead down to two. One thing you don't want to mess around with, John, and that's confidence for a team on the road. And, and this Warhawk basketball team has the confidence as they've shown. They just hadn't put it together for a full 40 minutes, and they're looking to do that today on the Hilltop. Ozier, a response three. And adding a little bit of what they don't do well, which is from the three-point line. Normally, they only shoot 25%. Today, they're 36% thus far in this game, and really just putting their imprint on this game throughout. Zach Nuttall, a dead-eye shooter when he's on, hits the three in response to make it two points again. And that's what they needed to do. You see Kendrick Davis with a nice steal. Casual offense by Elijah Gonzalez, and, and that's the type of momentum boost. First, you get the ball to Zach Nuttall. Really a, a, a break. Break the glass when you need some offense. Nice dish to Marcus Weathers. And then Kendrick Davis with a nice steal in the backcourt to get Marcus Weather an easy dunk. Never know when this SMU team can get hot. There are a lot of different guys that can get it done. In response, a rare miss from Thomas Howell. It's only a second miss in eight attempts. And SMU looking for the lead. And that was the first poor offensive shot by Thomas Howell in this game. Tristan Clark did a good job of walling up and not allowing him to get the position that he's had thus far in this game. Weathers denied the advantage. He had hit two straight buckets after missing his first five this afternoon. Warhawks trying to regain the advantage after leading by as many as 10 in this one. Oh, Vandemel falls down. Gonzalez with the wide open triple. Elijah Gonzalez hits his fourth three of the season. And maybe none bigger than that one. Kendrick Davis stops on a dime and knocks one down over Gonzalez. Again, both teams just trading blows in this second half. Neither able to really disrupt the offense of the other. 
and that's really what it's all about when it comes to execution and the lack thereof is which team is able to disrupt defensively the other team's offensive scheme. Intensity going up in the last minute or so as Howe takes a deep two. Weathers out with the rebound and wants to force the issue to band him out. Warhawks doing a good job in defensive transition even in the second half, not allowing the Mustangs to get a lot off those misses. Davis can't give his team the lead, and it's off of Bandamel who... And then, look, it's not a loss if, if they don't get a steal. Really just trying to slow slow it down a little bit so that the Warhawks have a, a shortened shot clock. They're finally able to set up the offense, and shot clock's at 14 now. Luke Phillips, the backup post is in. Drive by Ozier on his way to the hole, forces the issue, and one. Kareem Ozier with 11. The Mustangs got what they wanted. Warhawks run a short shot clock, put it in the hands of players, not normally with it at the end of the shot clock, but then allowed penetration. Ozier doing a good job of finding the seam and attacking it, and just not there early enough to take the charge with Marcus Weathers in position, but a little bit of movement. Third on Weathers trying to give up his body for the betterment of the team. And but credit Ozier. And it's really credit to the Warhawks. There hadn't been many offensive possessions that the Warhawks have been sped up offensively and just taking their time and taking what the Mustang defense is giving them. Ozier, an outstanding score. And he gets the three point play to give him 12. He's coming off of a season high 18. Last time out at Louisiana Tech. Steering the ship one more time. Can Davis and the Mustangs get it going? Two players going with Davis the whole way. Ball is sticking there with Kendrick Davis. Need to move the ball side to side. Let it touch multiple hands and, and make this defense move. Davis to Weathers in the corner. Michael Weathers is short on the three. That's a view from outside. Seven of 19. Deep three by Harrison. And Michael Weathers comes out with it. Davis extra pass to Dorovich. His triple is short. That's the ball movement, though, the Mustangs need to have. Quick to Davis. Davis quick to the shooter. Dorovich is not able to knock it down, but you continue with that sort of ball movement. You're going to get open looks. And this is a Mustang team that has shown that they can knock down open looks. Ozier creates for Boston. Good box, box out by Tristan Clark. The white jerseys there for SMU. Under 13 to play, down by four, and Davis is fouled out top. Gonzalez with the attack and fourth team foul on UL Monroe. First on Elijah Gonzalez out of Oregon. Davis has 16 for SMU, feeds it to Todorovic, but two straight misses for the freshman. Right back to the bucket, cupping it and hitting it. Trey Boston with his first two in the transfer from Casper College in Wyoming. Ups the lead to two full possessions. Jack Nettle flashes toward the hole, but poked out. Ozier attacking and knocking it down. Nine point lead for the Warhawks. Ozier can do no wrong. Jack Nettle passes up on the three to take it to the cup. And I think they need more of that. The, the Warhawks do not have rim protection. And sometimes as a team, you fall in love with the three point shot, which, you know, after going 13 for 25, what they did against Sam Houston State, yeah, you shot it well. But again, you got to take what the defense gives you. Broke an 8-0 run by the Warhawks. Can ULM keep the pressure on? This is the man to do it. Ozier stepping back, but way short. Good defense by Michael Weathers. Closed out. Made Ozier shoot over a con contest and not able to knock it down. Unselfish pass by the freshman. Michael Weathers now trying to grind in on Ozier. Leaves it behind him with 15 to shoot. Davis takes a screen from Young. Nothing toward the basket, so he goes back to Weathers. Only six to shoot. Todorovic won't pass on this one, but it rolls around and out. Not 
Going down like it did. Nice find, Gonzalez with a perfect feed to Phillips, who can't finish. And Davis gets it back from Todorovic. Good ball movement, not all. Coming up short, but Young pushes down Harrison and picks up the loose ball foul. Mustangs got the shot that they wanted. Ball touched both sides, got it to the three-point shooter. Just not able to look it down. Good offense by both teams on those last possessions. Just not able to knock it down for either. What kind of win would this be for Keith Richard's team? Finished seven and 19 last season during the pandemic year. And, and what's most interesting about the Warhawks is talking to Coach Richard yesterday. He doesn't know his team or what he has yet for his team. He thinks they're going to be good, but they just haven't been able to put it down, particularly on the defensive end of the court. And you're seeing them figuring out on the fly today against the Mustangs. Sliding to the glass, Jones can't hit Michael Weathers with a confident rebound and turns it up the floor. The transfer from Texas Southern. Weathers, the crossover, hanging. Young, offensive rebound, goes to the reverse. Weathers had it for a moment, but Harrison strips it away. Samu's working hard, not getting rewarded for those offensive boards. Coach Jankovic trying to get Kendrick Davis a couple minutes rest to make a final push. Probably will come in around the seven, eight minute mark. Phillips throws it away. Phillips ahead of the pack and a goal tank to make it a five point game. SMU some rare points in transition. That's only five fast break points now for SMU. Zurich Phelps up to five points. Phelps had been held to one point total over his th last three games. Three pointer by Boston. And a breakout continues for the Warhawks uncharacteristically from outside the arc. And Trey Boston is the leading scorer for the Warhawks coming off the bench. It's been a, a surprise for the Warhawks. You're seeing his confidence, particularly from downtown. Phelps in traffic to Dorovich, knocked off the ball. But Weathers is there. Weathers trying to run the show with Kendrick Davis on the bench, and he gives it away. Harrison. No numbers, but Jones doesn't care, and it's off of Weathers instead with under nine to play. Again, there's just so many instances offensively when the Mustangs just fail to trust their teammates and just get into that hero ball. And on that last possession, you saw that by Michael Weathers, and the ball just starts to stick, and you try to do too much, and a uh, careless play in a, in a, really a possession where turns out to be empty because you don't get a shot on the on the rim. Warhawks can expand into their largest lead with the bucket. They've led by as many as 10. And a foul out front on SMU once more. It's on to Dorovich. As Kenrick Davis is up and off the bench and the all-conference player replacing Michael Weathers trying to give SMU that special spark that they've just not been able to sustain at any point in this game. To have you with us at Moody Coliseum for the home stretch as Harrison goes against the freshman Phelps can't score it and Phelps pulls down the rebound. Davis pushing, finding Bandamel, and the three-pointer goes, but a moving screen called against Davis, creating the space. I mean, I like the idea by Davis. You get it to your shooter, but the official saw something on that possession. Tim Jankovic. Yeah, that was a good call. He, he locked his arms um, with the defensive player and prevented and really displaced the defensive player and prevented him from moving. Like a step forward, two steps back for SMU today. Trying to get it figured out against a pesky Warhawk team that leads by A. Feed inside and Phelps takes it away. The freshman creating a spark. Beats Davis. Davis in transition over the top. And a foul called against Jalen Smith on the rebound. Mustangs have just been a half a second late on passes, half a second late on offensive rebounds, just 
lack of continuity on both ends of the court, and it's it's showing. And you're running into a Warhawk basketball team that's very good. They're doing a good job of taking advantage. SMU from outside the arc last time out. They 13 of 25. Today, not so much as Phelps takes it away. Phelps tries to get it to Bandamel, but overshoots him in transition. And even when it's going well, again, the two steps backward for SMU as Monroe continues to lead with under eight to play. Uncomfortable in Moody Coliseum for the SMU Mustangs, trailing Louisiana Monroe 58 to 50. And credit the Warhawks for a spirited effort on the road. A team that's only four and 25 away from home in the last three seasons, leading a good Mustang bunch by eight with under eight to play. John Little back with Stephen Howard. So the Warhawks have it back with another chance to advance the lead. And one thing they're doing exceptionally well in the second half is shooting from the three-point line. Phelps taking it away and on the breakaway, trying to ram it home. He's fouled by Trey Boston. This time, Phelps on a breakaway tries to do it himself. Well, as you see, just exceptional anticipation. Gets his hand in the passing lane, one-on-one, -on -one, just me, you, rim. And Zurich Phelps does what he does best and attacks the rim. Good job by... Trey Boston, though, not giving up on the play and not giving up an easy bucket. And can't knock down the first foul shot. SMU's been good at the line before that, but haven't gotten to the line a bunch. They're only 9 of 12 now in the game. And over on the trip by Zurich Phelps. In the Warhawks shooting 44% from the three-point line. Only shoot 25% on the season. So you want to look to one thing that's really accelerated there ability to play against the Mustangs is in the accuracy from distance. Yeah, certainly that can be a great equalizer in this game. And it has been today. Got the a mismatch on the block. Yeah. Harrison against Davis. And Harrison takes advantage. Largest lead of the second half for Monroe at 10. It matches the largest lead of the game. Mustangs have been switching on that pick with Harrison, and he's had that mismatch. And this is his first possession. He's been able to take advantage of it down on the block. And Demel, that's the shot he wants, but it comes off. Thomas Howell limits it to a miss. Howell's had a good one with five assists, six rebounds, and 13 points. One thing the Warhawks have done is taking their time offensively. That wasn't their best offensive possession, but there hadn't been too many times that the Mustangs have been able to speed up the Warhawks. And quality possessions, draining time when you're under seven minutes and have a double-digit lead, that can help shrink a game and get you a win. Absolutely. Davis to Bandamel again. Bandamel. Run off the three-point line, can't hit the two. The offensive rebound, stick back is off the mark by Phelps. I mean, you just got to credit the Warhawks on just the disarray that the Mustangs are having offensively in this game, just not able to put together successive offensive possessions. Al runs it over to Ozier. Ozier against Davis. Davis trying to be pesky with five to shoot. Phelps gets out in front. His third steal in the last few minutes of action. Can SMU take advantage? They're only one of their last. The defense of the Mustangs to extend. Push the Warhawks out a little bit to the exterior and not allow them to run their offense as close to the rim. Both teams out of team fouls. The one and ones for either team on fouls. Jones late in the shot clock. Off to Harrison. Can't respond on the three, but it's tapped back out. Heady play by Thomas Howell on the offensive rebound. Howell finds Ozier in trouble, and it's taken away by Clark. Here comes Davis, down by seven. Kendrick Davis. Another Bandamel triple, he hits again. Four-point game. 
And the crowd is into it. On their feet, they can sense a comeback for the Mustangs. What do the Warhack Hawks have to respond? ULM looking for a silencer. How? The ball's stuck. Ozier in the post. Off to Harrison. No! Here comes Davis again, and he's fouled at midcourt. And it'll be a one and one on the fourth foul by Kareem Ozier. In the defense of the Mustangs picking up. Back to that previous three pointer by Emmanuel Vandermill. Look how it happens. It's again Kendrick Davis attracting the defense, penetration, getting the defense softer. Nice shot by Vandermill. And then again, off to the races. Kendrick Davis, smart play by Kareem Ozier, not allowing the Mustangs to get an easy look at the rim. But again, the Mustangs getting some momentum, a little bit more consistency offensively. Last five minutes of this game. Kendrick Davis has that look in his eye. SMU had a couple tough losses at the Jacksonville Invitational. Situations where they could have won in late game spots against Missouri and LMU came up short in both of those. Davis trying to turn that around. He and the Mustangs have eight straight points in just a minute and a half to make it a two point game. Crowd into it. Warhawks running their five out offense that they've been successful with throughout this game. They find out him. That's just going side to side. Finds Davis late in the shot clock. This is where you want the ball with five to shoot. Davis for the lead. Yes! And SMU with an 11 0 burst is back in front for the first time since two minutes into the game. Again, big players embrace those huge moments, and Kendrick Davis is one of those players. Harrison can't hit. Davis looking for more, and a five on four as Harrison falls down behind the play. Smith, Phelps, three. Off the mark, Bandemel follows the miss. Make it 13-0. Bandemel came from the three-point line, did the huge shot there by Trey Boston, and that's the guy that can bring him back, the leading score for this team that's come off the bench but he's got four fouls so he has to play more cautious than he would normally yeah, they need him badly Bandamel another three no but Smith with the offensive rebound he gets up and he is fouled trying to break out of traffic and goes to the line you're loving the trust that coach Jankovic is having with this freshman you got Zurich Phelps and Jalen Smith in the game in the waning moments of a tough game. But on this rebound, you're going to see the six foot nine inch wingspan of Jalen Smith out of Orlando, Florida, adding those intangibles that earn you those extra minutes. Rebounded the ball well against Northwestern State with five rebounds earlier this month. Now his front end of two makes it a two point lead. Three-star signee ranked in the top 200 nationally. And it hits on one of two here as Howe skies in for the rebound. You got to credit both Zurich Phelps and Jalen Smith. You look at the last two games, have not played a lot, haven't really contributed a lot, but here down the stretch making huge contributions both to the Mustangs. ULM only down by two. And off to Jones. And contact. It's going the other way. The veteran, Tristan Clark, stepping out, taking the charge against Jones. Great defensive teams wall up to the basketball and low to the ball. And you see right here, Bandamel and Tristan Clark comes weak side help. Tristan gets that legal guarding position and takes the charge. Plays like that defensively can be deflating for the opposition, doing a good job of really Put your imprint defensively on this game. Vandemel attacking, leaves it for Phelps. Way off on the three. Two point contest. Warhawk basketball. A three can give them the lead with under two minutes to play, but Phelps takes it away. Zurich Phelps rocks it to give SMU their largest lead of the day.
And see, that's what Zurich Phillips has to do offensively. He has not hit a three thus far this season, but defensively, getting in the passing lane. And he's got four steals in this game. He's got to do more of that. Elijah Gonzalez fires back with the big three. How about that to make it a one-point contest? Warhawks are not going away. Vandemel makes the pass. Off to Jalen Smith and back to Davis. Wanted to get it in one four flat and allow Davis to take him one on one. Oh, he's putting on a show in the second half. He lets fly with a scream after hitting the three. SMU back up by four. Seeing Mr. Everything for the Mustangs take over down the stretch. Another clutch bucket this time to cut the Going to be beneficial once you get into conference play. The senior Vandemel big down the stretch, making it a five-point game. Gonzalez lifting the three as soon as he can. It gets tipped out. Boston with only two seconds left. And Dave.